Welcome back to the Linen Clinic on CKLU 96.7 FM. I'm your host, Bob Crowan. With me in the studio today is Chris Nurpin, who is a member of the Board of Directors and is the spokesperson for summer uh, for Sudbury Summerfest. Uh, and Chris, we, we've talked about what the Summerfest 2014 is all about, but unfortunately, a decision has been made by the Board that we may not be talking about Summerfest 2015. Yeah, absolutely. The, the Board uh, made that decision earlier this spring after a number of, uh, uh, of months of discussions and, 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 and issues, and uh, the resolution was passed that uh, there will be no, no, no festival for 2015. So for a summer festival to go on 17 years, uh, it's become somewhat of um, a tradition. Yeah, it, it's a mainstay here in Sudbury. People know it. It's a long time. It's 17 years. It's a, it's, it's a long time for a festival to go on when you've got on good years uh, anywhere from 30 to 50,000 people going through the Bell Park yeah. on, uh, on a weekend. And you've got all these entertainers coming in uh, to just stop doing it. They're, they're, that is a problem. So, yeah. So, so what's, without getting into the personalities and all this, what is the main reason why we're not at this point looking at a 2015 and what would it take for it to happen? Well, essentially, as organizers and, and, and the decision makers that have decided that this, this will be the last year, uh, cumulatively over the years, the lack of support from the city in, in, in Rolling Order Festival has declined to a point where we spend more time dealing with city issues and, 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 and red tape than we do putting on our festival. Uh, we, after last year's festival and a number of, of issues, the board uh, convened and, and discussion started right away with what do we do, what are we going to do, we can't keep doing this. Uh, the board is tired of, of, of dealing and trying to address these issues and remedy these issues. The, the board's tired of having to go and engage a counselor in order to get any kind of success or any kind of resolve from issues that uh, arise with city staff. And so a decision was made in, in, in the fall to, to engage uh, Fabio Belli, uh, who, who was a great advocate for our festival and was working with us to resolve some of the issues. Uh, a motion was passed that uh, Summerfest would, would cease to continue operations if we didn't see some change in the tone of the relationship with city staff. And uh, on that, we had we had a, a number of meetings with, with two meetings, in fact, shouldn't say a number more meetings with Fabio than, than necessarily with the staff. Uh, we had a meeting in, in February with city staff. The mayor was there, uh, uh, Councillor Belli, and the late Councillor Belli, uh, Calderelli, uh, uh, Councillor Calderelli was there, and and, and a few uh, uh, city managers. And the tone that Summerfest took was, hey, you know, let, let's wipe the slate clean. Let, let's let's. Forget about going on about the, the historical issues. Let's move forward on a better foot and then on a better note. Uh, one of the main issues we have as a not-for-profit is, is since the amphitheater went back up, uh, we pay all kinds of money to use it. You know, what used to be a free venue for not-for-profits now costs up to $8,000 a year to utilize for four days. One of the main issues we had is uh, the contract that we signed with the city says that if we need a technical director, we will be provided one at an extra cost. We bring in our own stage manager. We pay a company to come in from Southern Ontario. They have for many years. We're very good with them. They're very good to us, and they're very accomplished, uh, talented individuals. And this individual that the city subcontracts as a technical director is given the keys to the amphitheater. So you don't get access to the amphitheater unless you go through this individual. He essentially provides no service to Summerfest. He's there uh, in, in most capacities as, as a city watchdog, almost. And we are billed for his time the entire weekend. And so he bills the city, the city passes that bill on to us. And we argued that, uh, that that's neither fair nor right. So you still have to bring in your technical? We still bring in our technical director, but then this, this individual, you know, the, with the wording, if needed, and then the city gives him the keys. You don't get into the amphitheater unless you go through that individual. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's a nice guy, sure. But the fact of the matter is we're not for profit. We're counting our pennies. We're, we're looking to see where we can find savings and, and, and we can, you know, uh, provide, you know, the more it costs us, the more it costs the people to attend. And, and that's one of the things we, we try to keep down and, and mitigate. 
the argument, uh, we, we were never given the opportunity to sit down and provide that argument to the city. Uh, unfortunately, after uh, our meeting with, uh, with, with city staff and the mayor, and uh, it, as I said, it was left that we were going to speak about the invoicing issues and, and, and Councillor Belly was going to address them. He unfortunately passed away, and uh, the next correspondence we received from the city literally said uh, they acknowledged that uh, Councillor Belly was looking at the invoice issue. Unfortunately, he's passed away. Please advise on payment arrangements. So there was never an opportunity for us to sit down and provide our side of the, 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 the issue or to, uh, to argue how we feel it's invalid to be charged for this individual when we're paying you know, somebody else. And, uh, and, and, and with that, specific to last year, this technical director that the city subcontracts uh, brought in an electrician to make modifications. And there was no communication done with Summerfest organizers. This was all done outside of us. And we have a volunteer electrician who does all of that for us every year to save us that cost and those fees. So there is no uh, collaborative communication with city staff when we're putting together a festival. It really is very dictatorial. and. Uh, we have found that when we uh, uh, bring note to issues, uh, you know, the, the attitude on the other side almost seems to become uh, defiant toward, toward our issues. We've never been given, you know, I, this has been going on and, and been talked about in the community and, and, and I think one of the things I'd like to mention today is how the city has continuously said that they've sat with Summerfest and quite frankly they haven't. We've asked for the meetings, the city has never provided them. Um, and, and we haven't gotten any resolve. Uh, city staff, uh, time and time again, have packaged all of our issues, or, or all of our, our, our uh, for lack of a better word, conflicts with the city, as health and safety issues, which is, is flabbergasting when, when, when you think of, of 17 years of festivals, and I think, there, you know, one injury, not that I mean to downplay it, it, you know, it was unfortunate for that individual, but no harm came to the festival, no harm came to the city of it, it was mitigated, we had, you know, the, the proper insurances in place and, 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 and the processes and the, and the policies. And so because we had done that and we were diligent, it was taken care of the way it was supposed to. So to, to, to come at us year after year with these, these arbitrary decisions on the ground while we're putting out our festival and almost always with it's a health and safety concern, it, it's just, it, it, it's not just offensive, it's flabbergasting and it is dictatorial, and Summerfest really does feel that they pay the city to become, uh, you know, uh, uh, servants to the city, and it, it, it's unfortunate. And then, uh, regardless of what uh, uh, official statements have come from the city, um, there are fantastic people we work with at city. We don't mean to blanket all of the city staff as being difficult to work with, but there are certainly a number of them that make this, this planning, this festival, very, very difficult. Uh, and, 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 and the foolishness, uh, you know, um, one of the issues last year that was brought up on the Thursday, uh, and, and I'll, I'll explain the whole scenario maybe to give a, an idea of what it's, what it's like and what the tone is from city staff. Uh, one of the issues that came up with, on Thursday night was city want, the city wanted us to start serving uh, beer in cups, so pouring them from, from uh, the beer cans into the cup and serving them. We were told this Thursday night we didn't have the, 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 the resources to do it, we didn't have the, the, the manpower to do it, but we had to do it. We were told we had to do it because beer cans can be projectiles. It's a health and safety thing. We began doing this, and as we did this, this slowed up our, our, our ability to, to serve the alcohol to the individuals. Lineups started, and so these lineups started blocking bathrooms and gate exits, and, and guess what we've just created, folks? A health and safety concern. So decisions are made from city staff and it's almost in a very narrow-minded view, I want you to do this. We argued uh, back, well, anything can be a, a, a projectile, a water Have bottle. Have you ever had issues with that? Never. There has never been an issue like that. And, and I want to go uh, on that, that liquor licensing and, and talk about that a little more. Uh, there, you know, so. Right at the beginning of this festival, we now have a contentious uh, issue. We served them in the cups for so long, and then we just couldn't do it. And, and we were blocking exits and blocking the, the bathroom. So, you know, as organizers, we decided we're within our rules. We're within our legislation under the Liquor Licensing Act. We Doing this is causing us more problems than it's solving. So back to the cans we went. 
So, liquor, liquor inspector gets called into the park. Summerfest didn't call him. We're not sure who did. And he shows up at the park. And uh, before he comes to talk, talk to us, city staff um, uh, more or less, you know, uh, commandeer him. And they spend an hour talking to him. And he comes to talk to us, and he has nothing to change and nothing to suggest. Uh, he was very, uh, very diplomatic in, in the things he had said to us in, in regards to what the city had told him. Uh, one of the issues the city wanted us, or one of the, another thing the city wanted us to do in regards to the liquor licensing was um, move one of our food vendors right in beside where we were serving the beer. Well, according to the legislation, we had the, the food vendors in the licensed area, which is something we have to commit to, perfectly within the regulations of what the licensing. Uh, requirements are no issues coming from the liquor licensing agent but city staff and and you know all we could really delve out of the conversation we had with the liquor inspector after the fact was essentially the the motivation of city staff was to get the liquor inspector to support what they wanted to do we were completely within legislation we were following all the rules and you know and, and it's that type of thing that is you know that's not supporting a festival uh, and, and it's funny you know, you, you sign all kinds of contracts, you get your insurances, and you roll out this festival. And, and, and there are concerns of health and safety, and, and we want the community to be safe, and, and we want to mitigate any liability issues, and we want to make sure that not only has Summerfest covered all bases, but that people are safe. And Nobody wants to get sued, either. Well, well and, 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 and that's the big thing. So we go through that, and we've not been sued. And, and what, you know, what, what amazes me is that you know, you meet all these terms of the city and all these legislation, and then you have city staff coming in and putting their hands in everything. And what amazes me is that nobody at the city has realized how they're opening themselves up to liability by doing that. You sign a contract with the city. We said that we've met the terms of the city. Uh, something happens, the city is free and clear of that liability because we've met the terms. City staff coming into their park and putting their hands on absolutely everything uh, insurance companies are going to have a heck of a time, uh, you know, or, or a great time uh, laying liability on the city when something happens and, and, and a lawyer for an insurance company can say, hey, you guys were down in there. You, you, you had your hands all over it, so you're just as liable as Summerfest is. And it amazes me that nobody in the city has realized that. Uh, and, and it's not just that, you know, uh, there's one staff member every single year. Uh, I take care of the backstage and all the media and all the access of, uh, to, to the concerts. Uh, for, for media and so on and uh, every single year one single staff member videotapes every concert maybe not every concert I, I've seen the city staff videotaping a number of concerts we are uh, contractually obligated to ensure media don't uh, take pictures or don't uh, record any uh, anything usually past the first three songs that's usually what's stipulated sometimes it varies from artist to artist We've never had the city ask us. We've never had the city staff member ask us. And by that city staff member doing that, they are actually putting us at risk of breaching our contract with the artist. So it, 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 it's stuff like that. It, and, and it's so cumulative. So I was going to say, it, so it's not one thing. It's oh, it's kind goodness. Of like, so the, the, the issue with the technician is more or less a straw. That, it's not a straw. It's well, it's the, the fact that they the won't let us sit down and talk about it, you know. Uh, we, we have no problem uh, having respectful conversation. We have no problem collaborating with the city. But the, you know, and, and what's unfortunate is when we do counter with anything, the city seems to, or city staff, will just change the tone. You know, the carnival issue three years ago, we battled two years to keep carnivals here in the city. And city staff are recommending that carnivals be banned from, from municipal property. And we battled that. And that first year, we were not told anything in advance, first year back into the park, I'm sorry, 2011. Uh, and, and when we went to set up our carnival, city staff told us we couldn't have it in the park. What do you mean we can't have it on? We're, we're down here setting up a festival. What, what, what This is new. Well, and, and why, we asked. The answer we got from city staff was, carnivals don't fit in the city's vision of what ball park should be used for. Well, then I'm guessing the public consultation process that was apparently utilized to redesign and redevelop Bell Park wasn't a, really a two-ended conversation, was it? How, what do you mean it doesn't fit into your vision? So what is your vision of, of Bell Park? Well, you couldn't get an answer on that. So we, we, we not willing to, to roll over, uh, we, we pursued the issue. And then, you know, it changed to, well, it's a noise thing or it, it, it's, a, it's a bylaw thing. And, 
we need to review it. And, and, and city council sent you know staff back to come back with recommendations. And 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 uh, the second year, uh, we brought in the carnival. We were told we could have the carnival, but when the carnival applied to the city to get a, buy, a permit, the city said no. We're not giving you a permit this year. No communication to Summerfest. Just to one of our, our you know. So uh, there, the, it, the relationship is not healthy. So you're hitting on a, you're hitting on one of those areas. Of, I think, and this this would open up a whole other can of worms. But I think if we had full time counselors, that you probably wouldn't have had these problems because one of the difficulties is city staff presents something like a vision in a 180 page report mm -hmm. to city council and then the motion is to accept the vision very few pieces are picked up yeah and it's these little pieces like you're talking about that get approved and city staff then can say well council approved it yeah well and you they know really didn't but <laughs> they didn't know what was in there well and i i i think I'll have to speak personally to that. I can't necessarily speak in terms of, 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 of Summerfest, but if you're going to run for public office, whether it's a full-time or part-time, and, and you win, uh, you don't have an excuse for not educating no, yourself. No. You know that it's you and, know it's a half-time job, and, and yeah, so and, you have to slow people down. And I think you've hit, well, you've, you've hit a real problem. And I, I guess from a, my perspective is uh, I, I know we we talked about the fact that it takes a year to organize one of these things. What happens if the city wants to have Summerfest 2015 take place? Well, there would have to be entire, uh, a, a complete change in attitude from the city. Uh, there would have to be, you know, it's really been Summerfest's experience that um, we, we sit with staff and we sit with council and we, we present our side of the story and then staff presents their side of the story and that's the end of it. It's, it's staff's side of the story that the council follows, and which means, you know, and, and we've heard things from councillors, well, we don't hear other festivals complaining. Well, uh, quite frankly, is that relevant to what we're, we're saying to you? Well, it no. sounds like you're talking about a policy that is uh, applied to all festivals now. Well, what's, you know, why, why, why does it matter if we have an issue, if somebody else doesn't bring that issue to you? Should we not sit down and talk about that it's, issue? It's an issue. You know, and, 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 and fortunately, you know, I was so offended this year sitting in uh, one of the meetings, uh, the, the mayor was there, and, and, and uh, one staff member, and his attitude was just offensive, and he said, well, maybe you're just all tired. And, and you know, I, I didn't respond with what I wanted to respond with, which is, yeah, we're tired of dealing with you folks, and we're tired of that kind of mentality. You know, who are you to dictate to, to us what our, 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 our issue is? Uh, one of the biggest dysfunctions of this whole thing is that in the last two years we have had to put so much effort and energy into city staff and dealing with these issues that we're not able to focus on our organization and, and that needs to be done in any organization in order to keep it going and viable our organization is still viable we're still rolling out this festival like we have each and every year before but we're not going to continue giving up our vacations and, and working on emails till three o'clock in the morning or reviewing contracts or, 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 or doing this and, and, and doing that if our time is wasted because the support isn't there at the city level. And, and arts and culture, I think one of the things that needs to be mentioned is, is arts and culture is something that is gonna come from your community. It's gonna start in the community. It's gonna be supported by your community. And if you start bringing in all of these, these you know, the policies that, are, that need to be developed around that need to be developed to leave it to grow, not to control it. You can't control arts and culture. It's something that, that's magical and it happens in your community and your policies have to recognize that and they have to nurture that. That doesn't exist at the city. So from a practical standpoint, you've already, I mean, you've had discussion with the current staff and council, so nothing's going to change. No, that no, we can't need counselors. So, you know, what's, what's really unfortunate is uh, uh, current counselors will not respond to our emails. They will not engage with us, which I think is terribly offensive. It's not just an organization, but guess what, folks? We're all taxpayers, too. You have a responsibility to respond, and, and, and they don't, which to me just shows the, the, the lack of concern. And, and the fact that they, they are being uh, uh, guided by staff and they're not opening their ears to our issues. So December 1st, a new council gets sworn in. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, <laughs> even if there's one new person yeah. in the council. 
Um, there, I mean, there's a window, there's a time window for running a Absolutely. Our, we I mean, start applying for grants uh, right on the heels of this festival. You know, a so lot of them have to be in September 30th. So those grants are not going to be applied for? No. Uh, so immediately, that's a loss of how much? Uh, probably safe to say up to $100,000. Wow, $100,000 in grants. Yeah. So that's gone. That's gone. What does the city normally put in? Does the city uh, in previous year, you know, that that's... Uh, the financial support from the city has, has somewhat declined over the years. Uh, one of the things we've done in the past with economic development was applied for a loan. So that loan would be provided to us interest-free as seed money. So we could, we, we could uh, book our acts and make the down payments. We would then use the uh, Sudbury Arena as the ticket outlet, meaning that all sales went to the city to pay off that loan before Summerfest made any money. Exactly. Uh, seems like a great idea. What happens is economic development gets their $100,000 back and they can reinvest that in the community somewhere else. We were told this year essentially they don't like the grant idea or the, the loan idea. They want us to come up with a reason for us to, for them to grant us the money. So we started at the beginning, phase one, you know, and, and it's so ironic. You have to provide these metrics that economic development in the city can't complete their own, but you have to be able to provide them. And, and you have to describe what Summerfest is. And, and you, in order for us to have qualified for this money this year, we needed to have a new programming or a new direction. And it really was city staff dictating to us what we needed in order for them to give us the money. And they didn't want to do the loan thing anymore, which, you know, that, that's fine. I personally and the board, quite frankly, thought the loan thing was terrific. You give us the money, we use it to develop an economic driver, a tourist uh, event in the, in the community. You get it all back and you can give it and put it somewhere else. How is that not a win-win situation? Were you still able to get your grant money? No grant money this year. No grant money? No grant money this year. Uh, our outstanding invoice, we got a grant from, from Civic Arts. Uh, the city would not sit down and talk to us to resolve this, so they simply withheld the, the money on that outstanding invoice, which is, it makes sense from a business decision. But so that civic grants uh, invoice. So how did we lose out on the hundred thousand dollars in grants that you normally got every year? How do we mitigate that? Like how do we? How did we not? Did, because you were applying for a grant from the city, does that disqualify you from applying for the other grants normally? No, no, not at all. No, not for profits. I mean, anybody who's worked with a not for profit knows that uh, there's a mentality: ask for it all. So, okay. so, so, so is that hundred thousand dollar grant still available if you were to apply? For well, we we essentially by the time you know dealing with city uh, and and the specific issues by the time uh, and and I, I will say that uh, the the contact I have at uh, and I've worked with at economic development is an absolutely fantastic person, uh, you know, and, and really appreciated the work she did with us. But uh, it just uh, you know the, the time you know the back and forth and then dealing with the city stuff. Well, nobody's paid, so we're like I said, we're doing this on our lunches. We're taking time off work to do this. So, you know, it wasn't. Uh, it, it just uh, it was too late uh, in the game for us to expect to get uh, get any any money from them this year. So, do you get any grants from any uh, of the other? Governments or oh yeah, organizations absolutely. Or, so. You know, we we have great support from the Ontario government. We get support from the federal government. Uh, uh, you know, different government organizations. OLG, for example, um, uh, is a sponsor. Uh, we have sponsors with the media, and uh, you know, we, we we make do with what we we've got, and we've done very well doing that. We we run on a, uh, literally a break even budget, so that uh, we're able to 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 invest the money in this community, into this festival, break even and do it again next year. So, so, so suppose that the mentality is, no, we, we want to invite the Chris and his group back to the table in January, and we would like you to put on Summerfest 2015. Is it a possibility? Oh, any, anything's possible. I think to clarify, uh, there will be a number of board members that are resigning this year. Uh, I, my, I will be one myself, so there will be new blood. An organization doesn't just close the doors. There, you know, we need to uh, uh, file reports for, for our funding. We need to wrap things up and tie things up, and that takes a little while after the festival. I think that uh, if the city is interested in, 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 in reviving Summerfest, 
then it will have to be the city that invites the board to come down and sit and, and to work together and to acknowledge the difficulties, to acknowledge the issues. And, and that would just be the start. Then you're going to have to look at the financial uh, aspects of it. You know? How much would it cost to put it on? If we, the city, we run if the on city a, funded the whole thing. Between four and five hundred thousand dollars is our budget. That that's that's what we spend each year. That's what you spend, but you get revenue, right? Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. So, so, what, what so well, I, I imagine it would have to be seed money. What you know, with the axe. What would the net cost be to the city at the end of it? Right. Uh, an actual cost. Uh, two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So what? It depends on the axe you bring in, right? Yeah. Uh, this year, we, we haven't spent as much as we have in prior years, uh, but we're still bringing in the, the same caliber of ads. Uh, it just, uh, so it, it would take that commitment, so it would take that cooperation. So the difference between the revenue and the grants that you need to operate on a $500,000 budget, you, you generally get 250000 in revenue and 250000 in grants? There you go. Is that... And somewhere around that. Now, you, I wouldn't say it's all grants. I mean, we have sponsors. We have in-kind stuff. You know, a lot of our marketing and media right. is in-kind, and, and, and so there. You know, that 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 dollar value isn't necessarily all cash. So a lot check of it can be contract. Would have to write up would be about how much. Uh, well, if they're gonna put their money over their mouth, is I would say a good start would be a hundred thousand dollars. So a hundred thousand dollar check would get two thousand. Would get. A hundred thousand dollar check would uh, would likely secure our, our our bands for that main stage, which is is you know where the biggest expenditures are, and then from there, you know, uh, uh, move forward. It, but it would it would take that commitment. Uh, so it would take that quick commitment. Yeah, it would, and and, okay. and, and, and and a change of attitude. A change of attitude and acknowledging that these issues that Summerfest brings to the table exist. So at this point. There is no Summerfest 2015. No. If there is going to be one, it's going to be the new city council is going to have to basically make a motion that they want it and basically make a motion to fund it. So well, you know, I, I, I don't think it's fair to say that for sure. Who knows how this festival is going to turn out? You know, perhaps we'll end up with a, a, a major surplus and there will be seed money there. Who knows? But even if you get a major surplus right now, there's no 2015. No, because it's not about the money. No. It's never been about the money. So it's the money and the change of attitude. Yeah. Well, it's no. It's not about the money. It has never been about oh, the I'm money. Oh, I'm sorry. But, but it, 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 it's that. It's that bureaucracy. It's that red tape. From, from our that, point of yeah. view, it might be about the money if you don't have the surplus. Yeah. Okay. And we haven't applied for the funds and the grants, right? So it's, then it's going to be too late to apply for the funds. Yeah. For the well, yeah. Most. I, I'll tell you right now. We usually. I'm usually working on grants right now for the federal government. For next year and then we have the short window of time where you've received a grant from last year so you have to file a report of, of how that funding uh, rolled out when you apply for your new next year probably the thing that bothers me most is that when you when you interrupt your flow of funding for yeah the year, it's yeah it's dangerous starts, it is very dangerous to get back. and you're absolutely right and that was one of the things we talked about at the board level but why why should we as organizers um, Put so much time into to something that our city doesn't support and you know again there are some great people at the city but uh, I, we don't know if it's the tail wagging the dog we don't know why it is that unless we have a counselor right there at the table with us advocating for us we do not get anywhere with city staff uh, has it become an issue of, of, of we provided a complaint to city staff one year and maybe their knuckles got wrapped and, and so now we're in this this situation of we're going to pay for that for forever we don't know we really tried in this year to wipe the slate clean not to to uh, you know fester on old issues and and not to to deal with these things but you know the city has wholly misrepresented the tone you know, I've heard the city come out and say they've had meetings with Summerfest to help develop this checklist. There have been no meetings with Summerfest. Any meeting Summerfest has with city staff are requested by Summerfest and it's to deal with an issue that has come up. And we're not usually very successful unless we have a councillor sitting at the table with us. So... And this is our, this is our biggest festival of the year. Yeah, and, 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 and it, it, it's, it's terrible. And we love doing it. it, it it's fantastic to do, but it, 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 you know, it's like anything in life. You know, uh, at Vol nobody's being paid. We're, we're 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 taking financial losses. We're taking financial risks. You know, a week of holidays yeah. that we don't get to go on vacation. We, we we spend it here. So so is your is your board of directors willing to kind of sit in the sidelines and be prepared to come back if 
called under the right terms? There are some diehard Summerfest fans and there are some diehard Summerfest organizers. I would say anything is possible, uh, you know, but the, the, the exhaustion and the dysfunction that has, that has come from this, this, this type of environment working here in the city has just uh, tapped it. So, in right, less sort of an explanation is possible. That isn't it though? And, and because this isn't about Summerfest and this isn't about what's wrong with the city, this is about our community and what our